Brokate Yahoa, Brokate Yahoa Shai, Brokate Yahoa, Brokate Yahoa Shai, Brokate Yahoa, Brokate Yahoa Shai. Call Haloim La Yahoa by Hashem Yahoa Shai, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. By Hashem means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of his, own, uh, his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And salutations to all you brothers for preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And um, as you brothers can see this guy on the screen, you know, uh, Jay the producer or Brother Jay, whatever he's called. You know, and um, I was just uh, watching over Apostle uh, Tahar's video that he uh, put up last week. And um, one thing that this guy said, you know, stuck out to me was um, that our forefathers always accepted uh, 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 heathens or Gentiles. And in his mind, he believes they are actual Gentiles. They're actually heathens, you know. And um, when you go into the scriptures and when you go into history... That's a false statement, you know. See that that that's because this guy is strung up on a uh, a uh, 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 Jesus juice, you know. He's been drinking that uh, uh that Christianity, man, and that Christianity have you all fucked up, have your mind all bugged out, you know. So um, we just gonna get into a uh, uh, um a few scriptures and um, there's one uh a uh, little article that I found. Uh, I guess you the article website, you know. That I, uh, uh, I came across You know uh, Getting into it This is a uh, Bible history online This is temple warning inscription It says what did Jesus is, His name is Yahweh Shai It says what did Yahweh Shai think when he saw this stone An inscription was discovered On a Greek tablet attached to the Soreg Forbidding Gentiles To pass beyond that point It says um when King Herod had rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem between 19 and 9 BC, he enclosed the outer court with colonnades, and and he just uh, uh what you call it um uh refurbished, I guess is the word you could say, you know, and uh, uh, uh and um and added to the temple, you know, because uh, uh Zerubbabel, when you read the book of uh, Ezra, you know, they laid the foundation for the second temple and they built it and they finished it. You know, so Herod didn't build the temple, you know, he uh, uh, refurbished certain uh, uh, points and and uh, 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 added on uh, uh, to the building, you know, and he built uh, uh, other things around the temple and, and around Jerusalem. You know, he was known for his uh, for his uh, 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 construction, um, his construction um Journeys as you want to call it uh, uh, his, con his construction What's the word I'm looking for man I'm having a brain fart His construction He was known for his construction man Building shit But um It says the large Separated area was referred to as The court of the Gentiles Because the Gentiles non-Jews From any race or religion were permitted to enter This great open courtyard of the temple area They could walk within it but they were forbidden to go any further than the outer court. They were excluded from entering into any of the inner courts. And warning signs in Greek and Latin were placed giving strict warning that the penalty for such trespass was death. The Romans permitted the Jewish authorities to carry out the death penalty for this offense. Even if the offender were a Roman citizen. The engraved block of limestone was discovered in Jerusalem in 1871. Its dimensions are about 22 inches high by 33 inches long. Each letter was nearly one and a half inch, inches high and originally painted with red ink against the white limestone. And that's all I'm going to read there. You know? Because uh, uh, hey, uh, 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 the scriptures is the, uh, uh, the main you know, um, um, focal point. You know, it's the main source of where we get our information, you know. Now, this is a little clip that I found on Google Plus, right? It says, all Gentiles entering the court of Israelites will be killed. Hold on, but my man's made a statement and said, well, our fathers always accepted the Gentiles. And uh, what? It says, several of the prominent engraved stones, warning in Latin and Greek, it's like a Latin and Greek, the danger of immediate death. For unholy intruders in the court of Israelites have been found. 
they are 9 centimeter by 60 centimeter and 40 centimeter thick. The engraved blocks fixed every few meters around the ordinate, one and a half meter high wall of separation say, no, no one of alien racial stock may proceed within the bolstered surrounding the sanctuary and the encompassed court. Whoever ventures inside will be responsible for his own death. Anyone genetically impure entering, even Roman citizens, met his death. Purity rules were displayed equally, prom equally prominently in Hebrew. Any Israelite not, not conforming would be cut off, killed with dispatch. Those of unproven genealogy, deformed, blind, or lame, or even unwashed. The permission of the temple guard to carry arms is confirmed in Matthew 26, chapter the 47, verse. The guard has swords and staves, thus there must have been stringent genealogical controls at all gates to the temple and for each tribe certifying the admissible, the admissibility of each person. Now when you read down here, it, it, it's, it's real small and hard, and hard to read, but um, zoom it in. Um, as you can see right here, it says... Herod was forbidden. He was forbidden what? Because he couldn't go into the uh, the inner part of that temple. Why? Because the Jews knew at that time that he was what? He was an Edomite. He was an Idumean, a, 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 a racial stock. You know? So he wasn't an Israelite, man. You understand? But according to this guy, all our fathers accepted the Gentiles in uh, uh, madness, man. You know? So let's get into the scriptures and, 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 and prove this guy wrong, man. You know, because uh, all these different philosophies and all these different uh, 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 um, 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 damn, I'm having a brain fart, man. All these different um, commandments of men, as the scriptures call them, you know, these doctrines of devils, you know, we must combat it, man. We must be that light shining in the darkness. They're constantly trying to spread more darkness and darkness. Well, our light should shine brighter and brighter. You understand? This is uh, Acts 21. And um, I'm going to start up, you know, because those Gentiles that our forefathers did accept were Israelite foreigners, man. And I'm going to prove that, Lord willing, in this uh, this one chapter right here. And um, we're going to get some examples through the scriptures of the heathens never being accepted and Israelite foreigners being accepted. You know, this is um, Acts 21. I'm going to start at 18. It says, in the day following, Paul went in with us unto James and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things the Most High had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry, right? So Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. He magnified his office as it is written, right? So Paul is here telling James and the rest of the apostles and elders about what miracles that the Lord wrought by him among the Gentiles, right? I'm going to read it again. Acts 21, 19. And when he had saluted them, being the apostles, James and other elders, he declared particularly what things the Most High had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, when the elders, apostles, James, and the rest of the brothers heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, said unto Paul, Salakia, and um, where were we? Now, verse 20. It says, and when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, thou seest, brother. So they talking to Paul. This is James and the apostles and elders speaking to Paul. Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe and they are all zealous of the law. So this is James, the apostles and the elders telling Paul how many Jews there are that believe Paul's ministry. But I thought Paul was sent to the Gentiles. He were. He was sent to Israelite foreigners, man. You understand? Verse 21. And they are informed of thee. Who is the day? The day is the, uh, the circumcision. The wicked Jews and Pharisees during that time. 
they are informed of thee, Paul, that thou, that Paul teaches all the Jews, which are among the Gentiles, to forsake Moses. Because that was the whole argument. Some were teaching that they had to be circumcised. And uh, 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 Paul and Barnabas said, well, no, they, 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 they didn't need to be circumcised in order to receive salvation. And they went to the apostles and elders uh, uh, of that argument, man. That was a big argument. I believe it's Acts the 15th chapter. Uh, 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 that's what I want to say in my head, but I'm, you know, it's in the book of Acts. I know that for a fact, you know. So, th so that, that that was a big argument during those times, man. And they thought that Moses were uh, Moses. They thought that Paul was forsaking the law of Moses, man. But here and then, this guy says that our forefathers always accepted Gentiles, heathens. When even in the law of Moses, it says for us not to accept them, which we going to get that, Lord willing. This is um, Acts 21, 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Right? Because they, they uh, 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 Paul was telling them what? To, uh, to withstand from things strangled and things offered unto idols and withstand from blood, man. You know, these guys are trying to put a burden on me. You got to get circumcised. You can't do this. You can't do that. And, that, and, that. and they was like, look, you, you trying to put a burden on them that we couldn't even bear, nor our fathers, man. So we're going to do this uh, at a process at a step at a time. You know, it says. Verse 22, what is it there for? The most the multitude must needs come together for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those, because they, they was under the vow of a Nazarite, you know. And that's why Paul uh, 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 shaved himself uh, uh, every time the Passover came around because he must needs keep that feast, man. You know. It says, um, That they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. As touching the Gentiles which believe, which is, which, which we, we gonna get to that, Lord willing. It says, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. Right? Which that's spiritual adultery, man. Serve no other gods. Verse 26. Then Paul, then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. It says, And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him crying out men of israel help this is the man that teacheth all men everywhere a uh, it it says this is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place and further brought greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place so if, if all our forefathers were, were all willingly uh, 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 acceptable of bringing in heathens actual heathens and gentiles into the uh, 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 into our congregation into the temple to dwell amongst us why is they making a big uproar right here then man and these are these is in, in the greeks that they're speaking of these are men that they knew were israelites man according to john the seventh chapter it was common history that they knew that those Israelites that were scattered abroad, that those Gentiles that was living abroad were Israelite foreigners, man. They told Yahweh Shah, matter of fact, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to get it in, in um, different translations. First, I'm going to read the King James. And then I'm going to jump to a couple different translations. It 
This is John 7 verse 35 in the King James Bible. Then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? And we look at that word dispersed, it goes to the diaspora, which is talking about only of Israelites. But let's read a couple of these other uh, 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 versions. New uh, NIV, New International Version, the, the John 7 and 35. The Jews said to one another, where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live scattered among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? So these are these are people, these are men that these Jews at that time understood and knew that they were Israelites. But yet they was ready to put Paul to death for bringing them into the temple. So how much more an actual heathen? So how much more an actual heathen, man? So according to this guy's statement, it's let you know that this guy doesn't know the scriptures. He doesn't know history. All he knows is Christianity, man. All he knows is Jesus juice. And that's going to get you destroyed, my man. Um, uh, 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 NLT, the New Living Translation, John 7, 35. The Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement. Where is he planning to go, they asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. Berean Study Bible. At this, the Jews said to one another, where does he intend to go that we will not find him? Will he go where the Jews are dispersed among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? And that's enough of that, man. That's enough of that. So these guys, the Jews... The wicked Pharisees, those at that time, man, they were upset that Paul was bringing in Israelite foreigners into the temple. So how much more are heathen, man? So anyway, that they uh, uh, they were speaking about that uh, Mo uh, Moses, that uh, Paul was um, teaching to forsake the law of Moses, man. Which this is Nehemiah thirteen and one. It says on that day they read in the book of Moses, the law of Moses. In the audience of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of the Most High forever. And that's written in the law of Moses, man. That's written in Deuteronomy um, 23rd chapter, if I'm not mistaken. You know? It's written in Deuteronomy, man. But now I'm going to scroll down because... This guy said, well, our people always accepted. Our forefathers always accepted. Oh, they did, huh? This is Nehemiah 13. I'm going to jump down to um, verse 23. It says, in those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by the Most High, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his power, and the Most High made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil to transgress against our power in marrying strange wives, man? Oh, but we always accepted the heathen in, into our congregation, right? Well, then, then Nehemiah shouldn't have a problem with that, you know? Shouldn't have a problem with that. But yet these, but yet these men. Accepted these heathens in, in, uh, into the congregation and what happened, man? These women turned their hearts. Their children weren't even speaking in the language of the... Uh, speaking in our language, man. This is Lamentations chapter 1, verse 10. The adversary has spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things, for she had seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary, whom thou didst command... They should not enter into thy congregation. The Lord did command that, man. And it's written where? Hey, in the law of Moses, baby. You know? So where is this guy? Where is this guy getting this from? All our forefathers are, were uh uh no, man. 
See, because AA, hey, hey, that Jesus juice got you thinking that the Gentiles that were accepted in the congregation were actual heathens, which they are not, which we just read in Acts the 21st chapter, man. They are Israelites. This is Ezra 4 and 2. Then they came to Zerubbabel. Let me start at 1. It says, Now when the adversaries, our enemies of Judah and Benjamin, heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto Yahweh by Sham Yahushai, power of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your power as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Asaradon, king of Ashur, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our power, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord power of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. But all our forefathers always accepted Gentiles and they always, well, why didn't they allow these heathens to help build, man? See? Now you see the, the uh, Lord willing, I hope you see the, the picture getting painted, man. There are Israelite foreigners who are granted repentance. And there are actual heathens who, who, who will never enter into our congregation, man. You understand? This is Judith. Let me give you an example of an Israelite foreigner entering into our congregation. This is Judith 14. You can read the whole book of Judith, too. This is Judith 14, verse 5. I'm, I'm going to just hit this key point. It says, but before you do these things, call me a core, the Ammonite, that he may see and know him that despised the house of Israel and that sent him to us as it were to his death. Because they're right, because they bound up a, a core and laid and, and basically uh, 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 tied him up and left him down there near us like we was going to come kill him and torture him and shit, you know. It says, then they called a core out of the house of Ozias and we was come and saw the head of Holofernes in a man's hand. In the assembly of the people, he fell down on his face and his spirit failed. But when they had recovered him, he fell at Judah's feet and reverenced her and said, Blessed art thou in all the tabernacle of Judah and in all nations, which hearing thy name shall be astonished. Now, therefore, tell me all the things that thou hast done in these days. Then Judah declared unto him in the midst of the people all that she had done from the day that she went forth until that hour she spake unto them. And when she had left off speaking, the people shouted with a loud voice and made a joyful noise in the city. And when Accor had seen all that the power of Israel had done, he believed in the Most High greatly and circumcised the foreskin of his flesh and was joined unto the house of Israel unto this day. So is that a contradiction? Now in Nehemiah, it clearly says that an Ammonite and a Moabite shall not enter into our congregation. And here, a core, an Ammonite, was allowed to enter into our congregation. Why is that, man? That's because he was an Israelite foreign. This is Galatians 3, verse 7. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, it said he believed greatly. Where is that at? Oh, shit. Salakia. Verse 10, he believed in the Most High greatly. Galatians 3 and 7, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And it ain't no spiritual children of Abraham, man. This is the Greek word, uh, hurios. Hurios. It says, a son generally used of the offspring of men the children of israel sons of abraham a son is always so translated in the rv except in the phrase of children in the reference from the first epistle the apostle reserves the son okay a son primarily Signifying the relation of offspring to parent. Are the children of Abraham, man, are it actually or are the actual seed of Abraham, man? You know? 
So in order to believe in this word, man, hey, you have to be an actual child of Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as it is written, man. You know? So Lord willing, I hope this was edifying. You know? Just to show you that these 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 rack, these wacky ass Christians, man, these guys, man, they, they they have no sense of scripture. The Lord is not dealing with these guys, man. They can gonna continue to sip that 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 Jesus juice unto their own destruction. You know? It's still contained in the law as it is written, because the law is still in full effect. No heathen will ever enter into our congregation, man. You know? No actual heathen. You understand? And the Israelite foreigners, well, hey, hey, as we read it, Acts the 21st chapter and Judith, the Israelite foreigners, hey, hey, they are granted repentance, man. You know? So with that, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone and salutations to all your brothers who preach the gospel and truth and sincerity, always in charity. Shalom.